Okay, today I'm going to talk to you about introduction to how to use antibiotics with audience participation so you all get to uh, pick the correct answer. And since this is podcast, try to pause less than one second and pick the answer even if it's wrong. Try not to delay or hesitate so that the uh, talk can proceed ahead. If you need a handout, it's in the front as well, okay? <clears throat> Now, um, this isn't working. When you think of how to use antibiotics, we always like to use them where those drugs that work best at the cell wall um, are best. So what, um, for your question, which drugs in general work best at the cell wall? Yeah, so the beta-lactams, right? So beta-lactam antibiotics tend to work at the cell wall and they are more cytal, they kill the bugs, so we tend to use cell wall active drugs which are penicillin, cephalosporins, carbapenems. Okay, and then um, for your question, um, what drugs work at the aminoglycoside level that kill gram-negative rods? At the ribosom ribosomal level, I gave the answer. The aminoglycosides, right? So aminoglycosides work at the ribosomal level. So when you're using combination antibiotics, it makes sense to use a drug that has one mechanism of action and another at another site. And so that's where you get synergy. So knowing where the drugs work are helpful. And then for the back row, any of you back there, um, what drugs kill gram negatives that work at the DNA level? the topoisomerase DNA gyrase, right? The quinolones, okay, very good. So the quinolones um, also can be used in combination. Now here are some quick little points about pharmacodynamics you should be aware of. Number one, for the question right here, sir, what, when do we want bactericidal antibiotics? What infectious clinical syndrome? So you want cytal drugs for endocarditis, osteomyelitis, and meningitis, things that are life-threatening, right? So we want cytal drugs, bacteremia for severe infection, and yes, neutropenic immune suppressed. Static drugs uh, inhibit the bugs but n may not necessarily kill them, okay? Next question, uh, Dr. Chang, what type of drugs are concentration-dependent killing? that we can use once a day. Aminoglycosides. So we used to use aminoglycosides every eight hours and now we use them once a day because they kill bugs by concentration dependent killing, right? Penicillins, beta-lactams are time dependent killing so therefore if you really wanted to use them the most effectively you would use them how? continuous infusion because the time is more important than the concentration okay so knowing that fact helps you when you're dealing with resistant bugs okay all of you have heard of looking at the MIC and looking to see the lowest MIC the better the drug right however you cannot compare different drug classes a frequent error you cannot say Zosin MIC is 4, Cipro is 0.1, therefore Cipro is better than Zosin, not true. You're basically saying that within a class of antibiotics, if the Cipro MIC is 0.5, the Leviquin is 1.0, you can say Cipro may be better than Leviquin. Okay, you got to keep it in the class. Okay, what is the MIC creep? What is a creep? MIC creep. Right. MIC creep is that we've noticed that with Staph aureus, including MRSA, that as your MIC starts to creep up to the 2.0 level from 1.0 and 0.5, your failure rate goes up. Therefore, vancomycin is more likely to fail when your MIC for Staph aureus or MRSA is 2.0 or higher. So you need to be watching the MIC to tell if the drug's going to work, especially for Staph aureus. The other ones are less of a problem. 
Now, in general, penicillins and cephalosporins are cytal, as are carbapenems, as are quinolones, as are aminoglycosides. Remember, vanco is cytal for staph and strep, static for enterococcus, zyvox, linezolid, cytal for strep, static for staph enterococcus, daptocytal, and tigacycline, usually static. It's more of a tetracycline drug. So combination therapy, when should we think of it? When we want synergy like pseudomonas, endocarditis, osteomyelitis, bacteremia, we might want to use combination therapy. The other benefit of combination therapy is you may have less resistance due to multiple sites of action. Okay, so let's, when you learn how to use antibiotics, you always learned it in pharmacology by classes. These are the penicillins, these are the cephalosporins, these are the quinolones, which is great. But now we're going to talk about how do you use them in real life. And the way you use them in real life is based on the gram stain and if it's an aerobe, anaerobe. So let's start with gram negative rods, okay? We're going to pick this patient has, uh, has a ventilator associated pneumonia. So we need a drug that has gram negative rod activity, right? So name me for your question, sir. What's your name? Yes, sir. Okay, Matt, uh, what's the fourth generation cephalosporin that has pseudomonal activity? Cephapeme. Very good. Okay, for the far corner in the very corner, what third generation cephalosporin has pseudomonal activity? Right, good. Name me the one next to you that has a penicillin derivative that has pseudomonal activity. Right, piperacillin, tazobactam, they don't sell piperacillin anymore, right? And the, co the cousin is called Timentin. Okay, what is your knee reflex for your question when you're allergic to penicillin and cephalosporins? Dr. Shetty? What are you going to use if you're allergic to penicillin, cephalosporins, and I want to use a beta-lactam drug? What are you going to use? It's a monobactam. A Zactam, right? A Trianam, a Zactam. The problem with this Trianam in our hospital and, and many others is its activity against gram negatives and pseudomonas has dropped from 95 to 60% to 50%. So, as Trianam is a weak drug and we try to avoid it unless we have to. There was an article that came out that said carbapenems may actually have better activity um, and no cross resistance with the penicillin cephalosporin allergy. So at Moffitt, when you're penicillin and cephalosporin allergic, you get a carbapenem, not a Zactam, right? Okay. So carbapenems are the next ones. What other drugs can we use that work in other locations other than the cell wall? Aminoglycosides and quinolones, right? Okay, for the extra credit question. What's the drug you use when all these drugs don't work and it's multi-drug resistant? Your last choice, developed in the 1950s and 60s. Colistin or polymyxin E, correct. Okay, now notice that if you look at Pseudomonas, the MICs are about 80%, 85 Notice Cipro, we're down to 65% for Cipro. So Cipro is losing the battle for Pseudomonas. Now, for our question um, right here, your name, ma'am? Yes. Okay, Carla, uh, what is the Pseudomon the quinolone that has the best Pseudomonal activity? Is it Cipro, Leviquin, or Moxifloxin? Okay, so remember, if you make a quinolone, you're a chemist now, and you're going to kill Pseudomonas the best, you're going to lose penicillin-resistant pneumococcus. So if you go after the gram negatives, you lose gram positives. If you're going to develop a quinolone that has great strep pneumo activity, you're going to lose Pseudomonas, right? So the answer is Cipro has the best Pseudomonal activity. And which one has the best strep pneumo? Moxifloxin. And which one has FDA approval for both? Leviquin, sort of in the middle, okay? So knowing that fact will help you choose which one these quinolones. 
Now, um, I didn't uh, particularly like pharmacology and pharmacokinetics, but this is the one graph you have to know, okay? Um, when you take it, this will tell you if, some, if, if someone said, why will Cipro not work for strep pneumo as effectively as Leviquin or Moxiflox, and this is the reason, okay? This is why you don't use Cipro for community-acquired pneumonia, okay? So if I gave a dose of Cipro, the um, concentration would go up and then it would come down as I measure it in the blood and the MIC is the minimal inhibitory concentration of the organism so I want to keep the drug above the MIC as much as possible right so if I came up with a math formula and I said okay the AUC this triangle area under the curve over the MIC should be 50 or greater to kill strep pneumo guess what Cipro is a measly 7, and Moxilevo is 70. And if you use 750, which is the approved cap dose, you can see you now have the AUC over MIC over 50. So that's an important point. <clears throat> now, for the next question, for this corner, your name, ma'am. Okay, for your question, what's the aminoglycoside that has the best coverage of enterococcus? Is it amicacin, tobramycin, or genomycin? Just pick one. So the best aminoglycoside for enterococcus is gentamicin. So as you develop for gram positives, you lose gram negatives. If you develop gram negatives. So remember, amicacin, tobra, better for pseudomonas, genomycin, better for enterococcus. Okay, now I have a patient with a ventilator-associated pneumonia, and we're two weeks later, okay? The guy has a fever, leukocytosis, a new infiltrate, gram-negative rods are in the sputum. He's been two weeks on ceftazidime. So can someone tell me the most likely gram-negative rod that's going to grow through ceftaz after two weeks? Not yet, but that's a good guess. It's the spice or space bugs, okay? So what are the space and spice bugs? S stands for serratia, the P, Pseudomonas aeruginosa, the A, Acinetobacter, or the I is endol positive proteus, the C, Citrobacter, and the E, Enterobacter, okay? Spice, space bugs, inducible beta-lactamase. What's your second line drug gonna be? It's going to be the carbapenem. So if you want a nice strategy for gram negatives, you can use either cefepime zosin up front as your first line drug. And when that fails, you go to second line drug, which is carbapenems, imipenem, muropenem, doripenem, okay? Carbapenems. And just as a side note, for enterobacter, you can even use septra, okay? So um, the problem with azactam, ceftazidine, zosin is you may induce the spice or space bugs, okay? Now, cefepime um, replaced most hospitals' use of ceftazidine, and what was cefepime's claim to fame? It does not induce the spice bugs, okay? So that's why cefepime has replaced ceftazidine, and so you hardly ever use ceftaz anymore. You use cefepime because long term it has less induction of the spice bugs okay so remember that remember though cefepime is not a second line drug if you've been on zosin for four weeks it's not necessarily a good idea to switch them to cefepime if they're septic you want to use carbapenems as your second line drug okay so this will be on your boards now for your question, sir, can you name me one of two bugs that's an extended spectrum beta lactamase producer called ESBL? And your lab and every lab will tell you this is an ESBL, and you're supposed to know something when that starts flashing. Just name me any gram negative rod that's an ESBL. Right. So E. coli is your number one, and your number two is Klebsiella, right? So ESBLs, E. coli, Klebsiella. And guess what the drug of choice is for these bugs? Carbapenems, second line drug. So if you have a breakthrough gram negative on a zosin kind of drug, you want to go to carbapenem second line because you're worried about spice bugs and ESBL bugs, right?
So now Acinita bacter is in a class all of itself. Dr. Ayler has published on Acinito in returning veterans with injuries in Afghanistan and Iraq. It's in the soil there. So for our first question, ma'am, your name next to you. Okay, what would be your drug of choice for Acinetobacter in the blood pending sensitivities? And it's combination therapy, so what do you guess? <laughs> Anybody? Okay, you want to use a carbapenem. Remember the space bugs, the A, carbapenems, second line. Carbapenem, and this is going to be easy for you to remember. Which aminoglycoside has the best acinetobacter coverage? And they both begin with the letter A. Amikacin, right? Okay, let's say it's multi-drug resistant and these two drugs are out. What other choices do you have? You don't have a whole lot, by the way. Unison, um, by the way, used to be a tried and true because the sulbactam component has activity, but that's sort of fallen out of the wayside, so that's sort of old hat, not a great choice. Tigacycline, by the way, has acinito coverage, so it could be a choice, but remember, it's static. If it's in the blood, maybe you don't want a static drug. You have to think about that. So guess what is your bazooka? When everything else fails for gram negatives, what are you going to use? Colistin, but what are you going to fry when you use colistin? After about four days, something's going to fail. What is it? The kidneys. So you better use it judiciously because the kidneys are going to fail and it may be irreversible. Okay? All right, now we're into our ventilator-associated pneumonia. It's now been two weeks on a carbapenem. What bug is going to break through? We need our third-line drugs now. This is getting a little complicated. We've already been through our zosincephapemes. We've already been through our carbapenems. And now we're into the third line. What bug's going to break through? It's inherently resistant to carbapenems. Begins with the letter S. Right, stenotrophomonas. And your drugs are going to be septra, timentin, or ceftazidine. So you will never see me or my ID colleagues ever using ceftazidine or timentin with rare exceptions except to treat steno, okay? And sometimes pseudomonas. Notice tigacycline colistins in there too, but septra comes on the scene with steno. By the way, um, which quinolone has the best steno coverage is the exact opposite of pseudomonas. So moxiflox and levo is much better than cipro, which is the opposite of pseudomonas. By the way, stenotrophomonas used to be called what? Xanthomonas multifilia, and before that it was called Pseudomonas multifilia. So when we say Pseudomonas, we usually mean Originosa. Okay, um, for the gentleman next to Aaliyah, what's the main difference between Zosin and Cefepime? I have a guy on, in the unit with a pneumonia, and I have to decide Zosin or Cefepime. What's going to sway me into picking Zosin? And they came from a nursing home. And they choked on their food. Right, good. So aspiration pneumonia, anaerobic coverage, intra-abdominal infections, bile infections, I would choose Zosin. If it's a pyelonephritis, guess what? I don't need anaerobic coverage for pylo, so guess what I'm going to pick? Cefepime. So there's actually a rationale on why you pick one over the other, okay? Do you need anaerobic coverage? Give them Zosin. If you don't need anaerobic coverage, don't kill anaerobes unless you have to. Then pick Cefepime, okay? Uh, Zosin has the anaerobic coverage. That's the key. Okay, let's say for your question, sir, your name? Jeremy. I got anaerobic lung abscess, empyema. I got a sinus infection due to anaerobes and a tooth abscess. All of these have one thing in common. They're above the diaphragm. So what's your anaerobic drug of choice above the diaphragm? Clindamycin. Very good. And remember, clinda, besides killing anaerobes above the diaphragm like anaerobic strep, it also kills staph aureus, which flagell does not. So there's your answer. What's the drug below the diaphragm? Flagell metronidazole. 
What are the anaerobes for your question in the back? Your name? Back behind you. Right there? Next to you? Yes. Okay, for your question, what's the anaerobes in your stool that you have to cover with metronidazole? One's a gram negative rod anaerobe and one's a gram positive rod. Can you name me any anaerobe found in the stool? One makes gas gangrene. So clostridium and what's that other one? B frag, right? Bacteroides fragilis. So clostridium, bacteroides, flagels, the drug of choice. And don't forget C. diff is covered with flagel. Clinda does not cover C. diff and may actually cause it, right? Okay, so remember, flagel does not cover anaerobic strep or staph, which are mostly found above the diaphragm, whereas below the diaphragm you want more bacteroides clostridial coverage. Okay, <clears throat> what other drugs kill anaerobes? The beta-lactam, beta-lactam inhibitor combos, which are <clears throat> unison, zosin, and timentin, they cover anaerobes above and below the diaphragm, all anaerobes anywhere. So do the carbapenems. And um, which quinolone has the best anaerobic coverage, which actually could be a bad thing? Moxifloxin, right? Okay. And then, of course, tigacycline has anaerobic coverage. <laughs> okay, we got a gram positive cocci infection. So for your question in the back, I got a staph aureus infection sensitive to everything but penicillin. It's in my bloodstream. What two drugs are you going to use to kill it? Did, did you hear what he said? Correct. Oxacillin or nafcillin. And then you could combine it with what to sterilize the blood one or two days sooner? Genomycin, right? Okay. What if I have group A strep in my blood? Your question, sir. What's the drug of choice for group A strep in the blood? Penicillin G, right? And then if it's cellulitis, where half the time it's staph aureus, half the time it's group A strep, i got to cover both of those, right? So then what am I going to use? Well, you could use Unison, Ansef. You can use Vanco, Leviquin, Dapto, Zyvox. Those kill both staph and strep equally, right? And then you might want to combine it with Gen or Rifampin. So, Aaliyah, when would you pick rifampin as a combination drug? What would be the situation? Rifampin may be helpful. Right, so you would want a prosthetic valve, a prosthetic hip, anything that's foreign in your body that has a peptoglycan sheath around it. You want to be able to penetrate that intracellular with the white cells. So when you add rifampin, you actually get intracellular killing, which the other drugs can't get. Okay? All right. Um, let's go against the wall here, Joe. What's the drug of choice for enterococcal endocarditis sensitive to all antibiotics tested? Amp and gent. What's the drug of choice for enterococcal UTI? Ampicillin, right? Okay. So what if amp and gent doesn't work? You're going to use... Vankin gent, right? Now, uh, enterococcus is unique, different than other strep pneumos and strep bacteria and something called tolerance. And what that means is that the uh, MBC usually, which is the minimal bactericidal concentration, is usually one or two dilutions above the MIC. So if the MIC is two, it's usually four, eight. With enterococcus, it's 32 times. That's why you have to use combination for serious intercoccal infections such as endocarditis, meningitis, osteomyelitis. So remember that tolerance. Tolerance, okay? For your question, sir, your name? Zach, what is the American Thoracic Society of America and IDC, uh, Infectious Disease Society of America guidelines for a guy admitted community acquired pneumonia, strep pneumo, pen resistant? ICU, ventilator, what drug are you going to give them? And there's two choices. Good old strep pneumos growing in the blood. You don't have sensitivity. What are you going to give them? Okay, Leviquin or Zosin? Thangy? Right. 
Correct. So your answer for the Leviquin was correct. You don't want to use Cipro. We already said why, right? So it's Leviquin or Moxie. And then your other choice would be Ceftriaxone plus Azithromycin. Okay? And then for your question, what does Azithromycin cover that Ceftriaxone doesn't in the world of pneumonia? The atypicals. And what are the atypicals? Sir, do you know? Atypicals? Mycoplasma Legionella chlamydia, right? Okay. Um, why did uh, they do a sub-analysis and people on Rosef and Azithro did better than Rosef and alone? For strep pneumo. Because Azithro has immune modulating factors, okay? It's like giving them prednisone. It modulates the immune system, and so that's why it helps. It's even used for boop, bronchiolitis obliterans with organizing pneumonia. You can use azithromycin. <coughs> okay, MRSA, drug of choice for your question in the back. In the blood, MRSA in the blood, what do you want to use? Banco, okay, that's a good choice. What if it's a boil and they have no money? Doxycycline or Septra, right? So, drug of choice, Vanco, IV, Doxycycline or Septra if it's just a mild boil. And then your other choices are you could combine it with Rifampin, remember? It also helps to decolonize them. Bacterban ointment to help decolonize them. You can use Zyvox that kills MRSA. And then Daptomycin also works against MRSA. And tigacycline has activity, but we don't typically use it for that indication. Okay, the drug of choice for VRE in your blood. VRE is in my blood. What are you going to order? Uh, actually, Zyvox is static. You don't want to use that in a blood model. You want to use a cytal drug. Uh, daptomycin, right? So, VRE, you can use Zyvox, Dapto, Synersid. Remember, Synersid does not cover fecalis. And Tigacycline are your four choices. All right? But Dapto is usually the one that you're going to pick. Most of your VRE is Fecium. 10% is fecalis. And less than 1% are these other species of VRE that you should be aware of. <laughs> OK, this is the best part of the lecture from my standpoint, because you only got about two minutes in med school, and you forgot all about it. And yet you get called three times a year. Someone's growing a grandpa's of rot in the blood. And usually you have no idea what the bug is. OK, so I'm going to give you a quick, dirty, and easy way to remember. OK, so grandpa's of rods can be broken down into those treated with Vanco and those treated with a penicillin drug, whether it's penicillin, ampicillin, or whatever. So the number one grandpa's of rod growing in anybody's blood culture for your qu question, ma'am, is? Right, Carinibacterium. What's the bad Carinibacterium when it's in the blood? You have to pull the line out. Carinibacterium blank, not diphtheria, but JK. Thank you. So if it's JK, line comes out. Non-JK are also known as diphtheroids, right? So JK. The next big class of grandpas of rods going to treat is? Bacillus, not anthrax, right? Bacillus species. Okay, now it gets real difficult. What are the drugs that we use for penicillin? Ampicillin, grandpas of rods are listeria. Remember, that's amp and gent. Uh, lactobacillus, usually normal vaginal flora, may show up in your urine. Propionobacter, that's a contaminant usually under some situations like shoulder surgery uh, replacements, neurosurgery, VP shunts. Erysipelothrix causes a cellulitis handling fish and chickens, shrimp. And then the big one of all is clostridium. So that's treated with flagell. So um, one time an intern asked me and said, I got a grandpa's of rod growing in the blood. The patient's neutropenic. They're on Vanco and Cefepime. Is that OK? And the answer was, well, 95% of the time it will be OK because it's probably this. But if it's this, you're in hot water because every time you delay treatment, 
because vancocephepine has zero anaerobic coverage. So we called the lab and we asked them some simple questions. Is it growing aerobically or anaerobically? It's growing anaerobically. Does it look like a big fat box car? Oh yes, it does. And the lab, guess what? They're not going to tell you that on the paper. It's just going to say, grandpa's a rod, you have to figure it out. And so by calling them, you can say, this is clostridium and get them on flagell a day sooner. So um, the other classic board question is, someone has a stiff neck and headache and they have a grand positive rod in their CSF and the question is what is it? Well it could be a skin contaminant carinibacterium or it could be listeria and you don't want to lose the fact that you just have delayed amp and gent for another day or two so know the grand positive rods from the blood cultures. Okay who knows the vanco resistant grand positive cocci can you name me one, anybody? I got VRE. Can you name another one? Uh, VRSA, right? Vank resistant staph aureus. Can you name another one, thingy? Leukonostoc. Can you name another one, Aaliyah? Pediococcus. Okay, can you name me the Vanco resistant grandpas of rods? They're inherently resistant to Vanco, okay? Don't use Vanco if it's a real infection. Lactobacillus, which by the way can cause endocarditis and bacteremia. Propionobacter, resistant to Vanco. It's not going to work. Okay, you got to use a penicillin. And then erysipelothrix. Okay, so it's not going to work if they're penallergic. Don't give them Vanco for these bugs. All right, drug of choice for Clostridium difficile in the corner. First episode. Flagell. How about severe C. diff colitis? I'm ready to perforate, but I'm still taking oral. What's the drug of choice? Vanco. Okay, so remember, there's been new guideline changes. If they're really sick, they get Vanco, not Flagyl. Okay, if they're mildly sick, you give them Flagyl, right? Okay, what other drugs have C. diff activity? Anybody out there? Is that all we know is Vanc, Flagyl, and Cholesteramine? What else has C. diff activity? We got nitazoxanide, also known as Alenia. What else? We got rifaximin, a cousin of rifampin, no absorption, and tinidazole in trials. And then when they're ready to perforate, what can you give them? And they may actually turn the corner intravenous immune globulin. So that's what you do for C. diff, right? Okay. Now for fungus, remember, I'm not sure why it did that. Um, remember for Canada, higher mortality than Pseudomonas Staph aureus. So what's the highest mortality in your blood? Greater than Staph aureus, VRE, MRSA, Pseudomonas, Canada, right? Okay, Canada. Let's talk about Canada. What's the number one species of Canada found in your urine after albicans? Anybody? Glabrata. What Canada species inherently resistant to fluconazole? It begins with a K. Cruzii. Which Canada has the lowest mortality in your blood? Parapsilosis. Which Canada has the highest mortality in your blood? Cruzii. Which Canada is associated with total parental nutrition? Parapsilosis. Which Canada is Ampho B resistant relatively? Named after a ship that sank in World War I. The Lusitania. Okay, so these are your, which Canada loves to go to your muscles? So if you have muscle pain, you probably have this Canada. Tropicalis. Very good. So these are some fun Canada questions, okay? Parapsilois, lowest mortality, cruzi eye, highest mortality. Now, <clears throat> what are the antifungal drugs that have Canada and mold coverage? The gold standard for 50 years has been Ampho B, but that's toxic to what organ? Your kidney, and it depletes what electrolytes? Potassium and magnesium, plus it causes rigors. So what do you think the companies did? 
they put it in a lipid formulation, okay? They put it with lipid ambosome liposomes, okay? They came out with three drugs, amphib colloidal dispersion, amphib lipid complex, known as Abelset, and ambosome. The most expensive is ambosome. We use it at Moffitt. It has the lowest toxicity. The VA uses mostly Abelset, a little bit cheaper, maybe a little more toxicity, but you can use ambosome. So those are the lipid formulations, very expensive. Now you should know four azoles, right? We've all heard of fluconazole, right? <clears throat> but the problem with flucon is it doesn't cover a lot of the non-albicans. Canada's has no mold activity. So then they came out with the next generation, which was <clears throat> itraconazole. But that wasn't that great for molds, and now they don't even make the IV formulation. They only use it to treat fingernail and toenail infections, histo, blasto, <clears throat> those kind of fungi. <clears throat> so then they came out with Vorcon, which actually outperformed amphotericin B, <clears throat> and then posaconazole. And so now we got five-star drugs when we're talking about molds. So if you have candida in your blood, and you don't know the species, what drug are you going to use? <clears throat> You're going to use an echinocandin. Which is your echinocandin of choice here? It's going to be mycofungins on formulary. Before that, it was casbofungin or cancitis. And in some places, it's endulofungin. So the, can the, the, the echinocandins, the fungins, okay, they have great candida coverage across the board. And they do have some aspergillus activity, okay? So you're going to be using a lot of mycofungin when flucon fails. And then rarely, if it's aspergillus, you'll use voriconazole. Uh, what's the one time you want to use 5-flucytosine for your question, ma'am? 5-flucytosine. Cryptococcal meningitis, combine it with amphob, right? <clears throat> so remember, same concept as with the bacteria. The echinocandins work on beta-glucan. The azoles work at ergosterol synthesis. And the polyings ampha work on ergosterol in the cell wall. So combo may be better than monotherapy. Uh, remember, azoles, flucon resistance, cruzii, echinocandins like cancitis, mycofungin, low numbers, covers everything. Vorcon covers all the. Canada's maybe a little bit glabrata is not as good. Okay, and then for molds, you can use combo therapy as we listed here. Okay, this is the hard one now. What are the ampho B resistant yeast? Can you name them? Thangi or Aaliyah? I just gave you one named after a ship that sank in World War I. Okay, can you name that one? Canada Lusitania. Can you name one that's a yeast and it doesn't begin with the name Canada? Trichosporin bigelii. Okay, can you name the molds? This is on your boards, believe it or not. This is a board question. A amphob resistant mold is Cetosporium, also known as Pseudalisharia, Fusarium, and the big one recently is Aspergillus terius. So you want to know what species of Aspergillus we're talking about. And Fusarium, you can use combo therapy. And you can see the great activity of all those new azoles like posaconazole. Okay, so here's our tough questions. Jose, I got right middle lobe community acquired pneumonia, gram positive cocci, diplococci. And it's pen resistance, which is going up and up and up and up. So I don't want to use penicillin. What's your drug of choice? Pick one. Pen G, Zosin, Leviquin, Azithromycin. Pick one. Leviquin. Very good. OK, you got it right. OK, so for the gentleman in the back near the thermostat in the corner next to you, yes, for your question, we have a pneumonia with air bronchograms, aspiration, nursing home. OK, aspiration pneumonia. What are you going to pick? Cefepime, zosin, meropenem, or ceftriaxone? Right, correct, very good. OK, um, for this group right here, Kevin, we got a ICU patient with pneumonia growing gram-negative rods. Pseudomonas grows out. 
what do you want to treat them with? And that's one of the most common is Pseudomonas followed by other gram negatives. So your choices are you can give them cefepime monotherapy, cefepime cipro, cefepime tobra, or cipro monotherapy. What would be your best choice? Okay, if it was in the blood, you would pick cefepime tobra, but if it's in the lungs, you would pick cefepime cipro. And why are quinolones preferred over aminoglycosides for pneumonia? Who knows, Aaliyah? Because they get into the alveolar macrophage and the epithelial lining fluid, whereas aminoglycosides don't. Okay? So that's why the pulmonology guys constantly use beta lactam quinolone combos. Right? Okay, for your question, ma'am, your name? Next to you? Okay, for your question, I've got a 20 year old college student with a interstitial pneumonia, cough for three weeks, an IgM hemolytic anemia, bullous meringitis, and erythema multiform. So it has to be what bug? All four of the complications of this bug. What's the bug? Mycoplasma, thank you. What's your three drug classes for mycoplasma? Next to you, name me one drug that covers mycoplasma. Azithro, name me another class. Quinolones, name me a third class. Doxycycline. So, for the atypicals, quinolones, macrolides, doxycycline, right? Okay, for your question, sir, patient was in this hot tub, now has pneumonia, not responding to Zosin and Tobra. Direct fluorescent antibody positive charcoal yeast extract growing the organism has to be what found in the water system it the outbreak was in Philadelphia and they were drinking from a water cooler Legionella so what's the drug of choice for Legionella Aaliyah Cipro Rifampin Doxygent Azithro Levo Miro pick one what's your best deathly ill Legionella patient Thank you. It's cipro rifampin. Okay, so cipro rifampin, there is no data to combine these two. Okay, so cipro rifampin. Okay, um, I have a patient with a severe pneumonia for your question next to Joe. And it's he's coughing this up, so what does he have? <laughs> he's got hemagglutinin and neuramidase. So he's coughing up the flu, so what drug do you want to use? Pick your drug of choice. Amantadine, Romantadine, Ozeltamivir, Relenza. Which one do you want to give him? He's got the flu and he's very sick. What are you going to pick? Ozeltamivir, correct. Tamiflu. Okay, for your question, he's now in septic shock, necrotizing pneumonia two weeks after the flu and he's necrosis in his lungs. What's the likely bug that likes to follow the flu? Right, community acquired MRSA, right? And it has the pantene valentine leukocidin necrosine activating um, virulence factor and it has a high mortality compared to PVL negative strains. So for your question, what is the best drug for MRSA pneumonia? Dapto linezolid, tigacycline, or vanco. Okay, so you can make a case for linezolid and what was the comparator that linezolid outperformed? Vancomycin. Uh, why would you not pick daptomycin as an absolute contraindication? Because it's bound by the surfactant and doesn't work for MRSA pneumonia. It'll work great for MRSA bacteremia, endocarditis, but not pneumonia. Okay, so your choices would be Vanco or Zyvox, and you could make a case for Zyvox because of the study showing a mortality reduction with Zyvox over Vanco for MRSA pneumonia. Okay, a spider bite, we all know what a spider bite equals, right? Community acquired MRSA, right? Okay, so what is your drug of choice for a community acquired MRSA? 
in the clinic, you've seen the 20th case, you're writing the same script, you're just going to get it printed on the pad. Doxycycline is preferred over SEPTRA. Doxy outperforms SEPTRA in most cases, except SEPTRA can be used second line. And in pediatrics, you can't give them Doxy, so what are you going to give them? SEPTRA, you could give them Clinda, but that's losing its effectiveness, and you can even do a quinolone in some cases for community acquired, but not for the hospital. Okay, for the back corner here, I got someone with splinter hemorrhages in their fingernails, so they probably have what? Splinter hemorrhages, right? And then there's throwing emboli, and there's the vegetation, pre-morbid. So the drug of choice for Staph aureus MRSA endocarditis is Dapto, Vanco, Zyvox, or one or two combined with Gent. Pick one through four. Four is the correct answer, okay? So four. Okay, uh, for your question, we have a patient who's 20-year-old golfing, has rapidly spreading redness, ultimately needs to be on the operating table, has necrotizing fasciitis, and grows group A strep. What are the three drugs of choice for group A strep necrotizing fasciitis? Just name one of them. Penicillin. Good. What's the second drug of choice? So the rapidly growing strep are killed with penicillin at the cell wall. The stationary phase, you got to use something that works at the ribosomal level, shuts down toxin pr production, kills the stationary phase strep. And that drug is clindamycin. And then what's the drug that's going to bind the toxin? Uh, intravenous immune globulin. So there's your necrotizing fasciitis three drug cocktail. Okay? So IV, IG binds the toxins, prevents T cell receptor activation. Most experience with strep shock syndrome could be also used for staph aureus. Okay, um, for your question, ma'am, again, I have a, what's your name again? No, next to you. Okay, Candace, we have a diabetic with a black necrotic scrotal area getting septic. This was named after a surgeon in 1836. What was the guy's name? Right. So Fournier's gangrene, you need surgery. You get rid of the dead tissue, close it up, and what are your drugs of choice going to be? Clinda and Cipro, Zosin and Vanco, Cefepime and Gent, Muropenem and Zosin. So what is the best combo there that you would pick? Next to you? Your name? Wh which one you want? One through four. Okay, so three. The problem with three is it lacks coverage for what bugs? Anaerobes, right? This is a double beta-lactam combo. Both works at cell wall. Not a good choice. This one here lacks coverage for what? Everything from MRSA to uh, lots of gram negatives that are Cipro resistant. It's not a cell wall drug. This one might mix some of your bacteroides, so vancozosin would be your best choice. Very good. Okay, I got someone with a thickened bowel wall with pseudomembranes. So, name me the most common cause of pseudomembranous colitis. C. diff. Now we'll get harder. Name me the second most common cause of pseudomembranous colitis, Aaliyah. It responds to Vanco. What is the second most common cause? So if you keep getting negative C. diffs, you should think of this. Uh, Staph aureus, including MRSA, treated with oral Vanco. And then Thangi, what's the third one in one report is the third cause of pseudomembranous colitis? Very good. See, she's got it down. Klebsiella oxytoca. Okay, what is the treatment of your fourth episode of C. diff colitis? The patient is getting very irritable because you can't get rid of their C. diff. What are you going to give them? Aaliyah? No, that's when they're going to perforate. This guy's just having diarrhea. He's not that sick. Okay, here's your choice. You give them Vanco, 
refax them in, okay? And you can do donor stool transplant, but we don't have an IRB approval. So your only choices are one and two, okay? This, by the way, is um, very popular in many centers. It's actually becoming more and more popular. You get your relative stool, put it in a blender, put an NG in, squirt it down the NG, and it gives you friendly flora and gets rid of the C. diff, okay? They're actually doing stool enemas. They take the donor stool, your friend, family, put it in a blender, put it in an enema, and both of those have been proven because C. diffs are killing people, so they're getting desperate on what to use. Okay, so Vanco Rifaximin is your choice. What dose of Vanco are you going to use? 125, there's no benefit using 250s and 500s. You get the same concentration. Okay, so it's a waste of money and time. All right. Your second relapse of C. diff, you can do a tapering pulse oral vanco. You give them 125 four times a day for seven days, then BID for seven days, once a day, and then every other day, and then finally every three days. What are you trying to do, Aaliyah? Right, you're trying to make the spores germinate to the vegetative state because that's what's killed, not the spores. So this is called the Vanco six-week taper. So remember that so you can write for it. And then you can follow it by probiotics. Some people are getting into this with their Vanco. You can use Saccharomyces. There's your article. And then this is the most popular of all. Here's what you do. You give them Vanco, right, like we said, and then you give them Rifaximin, okay? So that's the most popular cocktail. That could be done in four weeks. You can do various alterations of that. And that was published in 2007. So those are some tricks of the trade for your third, fourth, fifth episode.